Hey, what's up, everyone? Hope y'all are doing well. Bitcoin dropping to $60,000, going to touch on that. And also a little bit about Celsius borrowers, people that had a loan. They submitted something to the docket. Hopefully the judge and the lawyers read it and there is action to make sure that they are helped. What I want to start first is just talking a little bit about Bitcoin, then I'll head to Celsius at the end of the video. So here, the trend is your friend until it ends. Basically, we have short-term hodler cost basis at $57,000 and the price usually touches the short-term holder, not hodler, holder cost basis. So that could bring the price down a little bit further, right? Bitcoin right now, refreshing this, $66,489. It'll be different by the time you watch this, down 5.5% today. So people are like, oh my gosh, right? Like what's going to happen? Well, this is the trend. It will touch and it does follow the short-term holder cost basis. So we may see a little bit more of a dip. We really have no idea. Here though, there are charts that show Bitcoin could easily hit these new highs based upon what it's been doing over the last decade. And here, this is a video from that real estate show in New York that happened like 10 years ago. Let me play this for you. We received your offer yesterday. I'm looking at about 50,000 Bitcoins. Bitcoin? And Bitcoin. That puts it in at around 13 and change. But you want to pay in Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> you sent us an offer in Bitcoin? All right. So the guy did not accept the offer in Bitcoin. He didn't accept it. 50,000 Bitcoin. Right now, that's like three and a half billion dollars. A billion with a B. So we are still early. This could, I don't know, this could easily, I'm not saying it will, but this could play out over the next decade. People are offering Bitcoin and then all of a sudden it's worth a ton more. And the party hasn't even started, guys. The party hasn't even started. These are my party lights. Let me turn that off. All right, let's talk a little bit about Celsius. So a group of the borrowers presented this really long and extensive nine page single spaced document, which I am not gonna go through everything, but they give examples of how borrowers are being inequitably treated, treated not the same as other earn creditors, basically. And here, many of the borrowers did submit their information and their names, but essentially what's happening is this. They have significant concerns regarding the refinancing and distribution process and treatment of those people that had a loan. We, meaning this group of creditors, urge the court to assess and correct this inequitable situation promptly by ensuring that distributions to all borrowers, including those in the refinance subgroup, so those that are refinancing their loan, are made at the effective date prices. So sorry, I'm not going through all nine pages for you guys. There's definitely a lot more here. And they really go into the detail of how they're just asking to be treated the same and treated fairly, right? And I hope that the judge and the lawyers read this and they do what's right. They do what's right in the eyes of just common sense. They do what's right in the eyes of those that want to refinance. They're asking for an extension of the deadline and just some very, very basic things like that. And next, really quick, somebody wrote to the judge about their claim codes not working. And if they forced me to get a check, they would send me a much lower amount. And I just want to remind you guys that are still having issues. You haven't gotten your claim codes or the claim codes aren't working, that the debtors will sell the crypto that was set aside for you if you were scheduled to receive liquid crypto at the prevailing market price as close to the date of the cash distribution as possible. So what that means, just to remind you guys, is that if you were supposed to use PayPal or Coinbase and it just doesn't work or it ends up not working out for one reason or the other, you're not able to get your KYC done because Coinbase is being completely ridiculous with their KYC process, or you moved and then you can't be in the jurisdiction to get PayPal or Coinbase to work for you, or whatever, whatever reason. But if you were originally allowed to get your crypto from PayPal, Venmo, or Coinbase, and then you can't, the crypto will be sold as close to the date that they liquidate your crypto as possible, and you will get that US dollar amount. So you will not get rug pulled if you were originally going to be able to get crypto. Corporate creditors and those of you who are like in Hawaii or jurisdictions that they knew from the outset that PayPal or Coinbase would not work. Unfortunately, your crypto has been liquidated at the effective date on January 16th, but everybody else will be getting their US dollar check or wire near the time when they 
liquidate your crypto. So you will still get the upside, hopefully assuming that Bitcoin and ETH is higher than what it was on January 16th, which I believe it will be. And before I go, I know when the price of Bitcoin drops, everyone freaks out. But I want you to remember this in this very, very blurry chart that drawdowns of 20 to 30 percent during bull markets are normal. I want you to look at this 2018 to 2021 bull market, but we had 21, 31, 26, 18 percent drawdowns during the bull market, guys. 2021, that would be essentially next year, 2025. But even in 2020, there was a drawdown, massive drawdowns, massive drawdowns in 2020. So be aware that in a bull market, there are enormous drawdowns of 20, 30. We may even see a 40% drawdown. And honestly, corrections are really important. And I'll end the video here. Corrections are important because if we just went up forever, there would be a way bloodier, way worse, way more devastating bear market because there would just be so much more pain and the bear market and the drop would be so much more severe. So these pullbacks that we're seeing where we're going down 15, 17% or as of this video, we're down 5%. These are healthy. These are good. If we went up all the way to $200,000 without a pullback, oh my gosh, we'd probably see a pullback of 90% during a bear market potentially where we dropped to like 30,000 from 200, right? Something crazy or even more severe than 90. So just be aware that if you hold Bitcoin, if you hold altcoins, that is part of the game is being okay with volatility. And I'll tell you that if you are terrified of this volatility, then you either one, don't believe in what you're holding enough or two, you have an oversized position. You have too much where if it feels horrible to stomach this volatility, it means that you're holding too much or again, that you don't have the conviction that you need. It's one of the two, right? So that's for you to feel into. That's for you to <laughs> look into yourself to figure that out, guys. But that's it for the video. I'll end the video there. Hope this was helpful. Till next time, guys, talk with you soon and bye for now.